Hey, Epicenter. So, you know, in my sermon, I said a little bit about this exercise or this meditation I did on 1 Corinthians 13. And I just want to actually give you an opportunity to maybe traverse some of that same text and let it be used as a way for the Lord to help you to see and understand a little bit more about his love for you amidst whatever challenges you've had. You know, as we get into the text, let me just pray for us. God, I thank you that there's deep truths about your love and about your activity in our lives that many times we're not even aware of. And Holy Spirit, you say that your spirit is the spirit of truth that reminds us of all truth. Open our eyes and ears so we can begin to see your fingers of love in our lives, some in many situations that we weren't even aware of. So we can understand your deep, deep love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 13. And again, it, you know, this is typically like the, the wedding passage. But, and, and it's appropriate for that. But what this is really talking about is the qualities of love. And more specifically, because God's love, this is really telling us about the love of God. And even more specifically than that, this is a story of how God loves me and how he loves you. And so what I'd encourage you to do is take out the text. Um, you know, for me, I usually um, I, I do it on my computer because so I can remember and write down the things that are there. And here's what I do. Take this first phrase, love is patient. And then think, think back about your life. And write down all the places in your life where God's been patient with you. Take some time to write down what are the different times in your life that you remember God being kind to you. Uh, you know, I, I just think for me, and there's been just a number of different times, in, you know, like uh, when Josh was like one and a half, um, we, he, uh, Elmo was a, a huge thing, you know, and so we, went out and bought this Elmo train for him. And, you know, I remember right on the outside of the box, it says Elmo not included. And there we were on Christmas Day with all his cousins and everybody was opening their presents and everybody, all the all of Josh's cousins were getting Elmos. And Evelyn and I felt so bad. You know, and we'd scoured, you know, Target and all these kind of places trying to find a little Elmo doll. We couldn't do it. And then so we, we get home. We, you know, we've got this big box and he opens up this thing and right on the outside of the box where it says Elmo not included, there's an Elmo doll right on the top. And we're like, God loves our son. It was so sweet. And I, you know, I, I, I'm sure you have times, but, but take the time to reflect on the kindness of God. Take time to reflect on where the word says God's love doesn't dishonor others. God's not easily angry. Where in your life has God kept no record of wrongs? What I encourage you to do is take some time now, maybe over the next day or week, to recount the goodness and love and grace of God. And then, as I mentioned, um, you know, what was so touching to me is looking at verse 7. God's love always protects God's love always trusts. His love always hopes. His love always perseveres. And to be honest with you, I kind of had a hard time with this because I'm like, I, you know, I, I began to write down all the times when God's love protect, protected me. And the many times that God's love persevered beyond my perseverance or my weakness. But I was like, you always trust me? What? It's, it's been something I've continued to sort of think, God's love always trusts. God's love always hopes. God has hopes for me. He has hopes for you. And I, I started writing down a list of where he's protected me. And that's like in front, you know. It's like the love goes before and protects. And then right in the middle, it's the love that trusts and hopes. And then on the backside, when I fail, he's got mine behind because it always perseveres. And I, I want to encourage you to take time to reflect 
on these qualities of God's love for you in your history. Lord, I ask that for each of us, you begin that revelation process of reminding us of how you've been with us, and some of us even before the time we knew you, so we can understand that deep, deep love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray.